Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Taking a live look out at the Alamo City. It's a lot more calm than it's been in the last 48 hours. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, see what the rest of the weekend looks like, see what the work week looks like. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this morning, Sunday, May 2nd. What an eventful day yesterday. Oh my election gosh. Election day. Between the, the rain, the elections. Oof. Hey, but we made it through. We it, made it through. It's Sunday, guys. It is Sunday. Credit to all of our teams in the election. A credit to our weather team. Sarah Spivey, Katie Blake, killing it throughout the oh, day. Well, thank you. You know, but uh, it really is important to keep everybody safe, and that's our main goal. And yesterday, we did have flash flooding in the area, and it resulted in some floods along the low-lying areas of the highways. I even saw a video of Broadway flooding as well. Now, it all came with much-needed rain, though, for us, and I'm happy to report that we're going to see a break in the rainfall here and actually end our weekend with sunny skies outside right now. Notice on the horizon there, you can see that it's a little hazy. There's some fog in places. It's 61 degrees at the airport and there are areas of dense fog like up in Kerrville. Visibility is down to a quarter of a mile. Visibility is down to half a mile in New Braunfels and visibility is down to two and a half at Stinson. Something you'll notice if you're driving out early this morning is that the density of the fog will come and go. Uh, so just make sure to take your time this morning. A wider view of the fog in places, uh, visibility down to three miles in Victoria and down to five in Beeville. Today is going to be a beautiful but warm day uh, and it will be muggy. You know, we've got a lot of the uh, water on the ground still that has to evaporate out into the air and that's going to keep our humidity a little high today. Uh, and so we're going to warm up. Uh, pretty nicely to 87, but it will be a muggy day. South southwest winds at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25, so a little breezy too, but it's nice to see some sunshine there on the map. Hey, coming up, I'm going to show you a look at uh, rainfall, some from your own backyards here in San Antonio. And of course, we'll also take a look at rainfall since Wednesday across the KSAT 12 viewing area. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Despite those heavy rains and the flooding, more than 50,000 voters cast their ballot on Election Day, and that added to a record number of early voters to total the best turnout for a May election in San Antonio's history. This morning, we're staying on top of all those election results. Let's start with the race for mayor. Mayor Ron Nirenberg easily won a third term last night. He got 62% of the vote to beat out 13 challengers and avoid a runoff. Nirenberg says that means he can get back to business of governing. That's right. Now the focus is getting back to addressing the pandemic and implementing a strong economic recovery. We're going to celebrate a little bit, but to be honest with you, um, the job of a mayor, which is one of the toughest jobs, I think, in government, uh, there's no relaxing at any time, whether you're in a pandemic or not. There's always work to be done. Uh, his closest challenger was the 2019 rival, former District 6 Councilman Greg Brockhouse. Though with this loss, Brockhouse says he does not plan to run again. The election's most contentious issue was also the last to be decided, Proposition B. San Antonio voters rejecting the measure by less than 4,000 votes, giving the city's police union a major victory in the process. Dylan Collier was there as officers and their families celebrated the win. Union President Danny Diaz taking a cautious approach, waiting until almost 1130 to claim victory, even after it had become clear that the nose would take it. If the ballot measure had passed, officers would have been stripped of their ability to collective bargain, a scenario that Diaz said would have had devastating consequences for the department. My goal is to let the citizens see that we're getting back into the community. Uh, it's going to take some time. Fix SAPD, the grassroots reform group came oh so close. Its members still in a celebratory mood despite trailing the entire night and eventually falling short. San Antonio is hungry for change. They have awoken. They see that accountability has been a barrier. They see that the union, the police union, has been the, the primary roadblock to fixing these, these disciplinary issues for decades now. Now, with the proposition taken down, Diaz says they'll return their focus to contract talks with the city negotiating team. We're not stepping away. Uh, we're, we're set the meeting date up. Uh, we'll make uh, all the arrangements that we need to, and we'll be there. And uh, we just ask that they come to work just like, like we are ready to go. Current contract expires at the end of September and could extend an additional eight years as part of an evergreen clause. Reporting on the west side, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. 
Now to the city council races. District 1 race will head to a runoff between incumbent Roberto Trevino and candidate Mario Bravo. Tiffany Huertas has the latest on this race. Roberto Trevino is feeling good about the election results and says his team has been working hard on different projects. Meanwhile, Mario Bravo is thrilled with the results and says people want change. One of the issues both candidates feel strongly about deals with helping the homeless population. Trevino is running for his fourth and final term. Last year, Trevino's office created a homeless outreach program. It brought different agencies together and they work with homeless individuals to guide them towards services. Meanwhile, Bravo has been one of the candidates going strong in this race. He is a project manager for the Environmental Defense Fund. I think the numbers show that uh, we still have a lot of strong support in our community. Uh, I think the conversation will now really you know, get, be more focused around the work that we've done and, and show the great success that we have seen. People want change. I mean, the, the numbers show that. And, you know, I, I have a track record of being a government reformer. So, you know, I, I think that uh, what I'm talking about is really resonating with the community. Bravo says there are many experienced professionals in our community that do work related to mental health and others are running shelters. He says District 1 needs to do a better job of bringing them all together. Trevino says he will continue focusing on making sure the community understands the different projects his team has worked on in the last three terms for the community. For GMSA, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Well, the big story out of District 2, a 26-year-old teacher leading the race and headed to a runoff with his former boss, the incumbent councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan. Jalen McKee Rodriguez used to be Andrew Sullivan's District 2 communications manager. He said it was that job that opened his eyes to what the district needs, and he believes he can create that change. Andrew Sullivan is running on a platform of similar issues, included including COVID-19, economic development, education, and infrastructure. Both are ready to continue their campaigns. Our plan is to really reach out to those who have been disenfranchised and those who have felt discouraged. There's a host of other candidates who got a number of votes and those same ideas, those same feelings that the other candidates made people feel, we have to make them feel the same way. My hopes for District 2 is that they know that consistency is the key, that they know that if we continue to start over, we're never going to move forward. But if we start and we continue this marathon, we will get to the finish line. This was one of the most crowded races, starting with 12 candidates. Now that it's down to two, the Eastside community has a chance to make their voices heard even more. Now this is just a small fraction of the results. We have all the information, including the five city council runoffs, all the numbers, and of course, other local city and county elections right now on our website. Just head over to ksat.com slash topic slash vote underscore 2021. And time now is 6.08, 62 degrees out. India sets new pandemic record with more than 400,000 daily infections on Saturday. This as here in the U.S., some states are starting to open back up. We have the latest on the pandemic still ahead on GMSA. And a shooting at a Wisconsin casino ends with three people dead, one more seriously wounded. We have the latest on the investigation. Let's take a look outside with live cam. 62 degrees at 6.08 this morning. Sarah Spivey saying today should be much different than it was the last 48 hours. She'll have our Sunday forecast when we come back. An overnight shooting at a casino outside of Green Bay, Wisconsin ends with three people dead, including the suspect. We are now learning it may have been a targeted attack. In an overnight press conference, local authorities in that area said police shot the gunman after he had shot three other people in or near the restaurant. The sheriff said the gunman went to the restaurant, but the employee he targeted was not there. The gunman then shot other workers. Two of them died. A third is seriously wounded this morning. The investigation is ongoing. Vice President Kamala Harris will take over Mike Pence's role as chair of the National Space Council. On Twitter, she wrote, quote, in America, when we shoot for the moon, we plant our flag on it, end quote. Now, America's first female vice president sees her work on the Space Council as an extension of promoting her interest in STEM education for women. Harris says she also wants to su support sustainable development of commercial space exploration. The VP has not yet scheduled the first formal meeting of the National Space Council on her watch, but plans to get started soon. And this is all on the legs of SpaceX astronauts coming home. We're going to be talking about that later in this hour. 
So last night around five o'clock, I live near Salado Creek mm -hmm. and it, it was still completely flooded. I mean, even though the sun was out, we saw some, yeah. I saw a rainbow in my area. Um, but Sarah, I mean, that rain, we actually got a lot of rain, but it was, it's good. We got a good amount of rain and you mentioned the creeks. Now the creeks may still be swollen today just a little bit, but we're not worried about flash flooding or major flooding of any of the local rivers. Now there is a uh, flood warning for the, uh, for the Medina River there down near 281 and that is in effect through tomorrow uh, just for some minor flooding there. So again, some of the local creeks and rivers may be a little swollen, uh, but that is all good from all the good rain that we've seen in the area. It's 61 degrees. It's cool outside right now in San Antonio, 60 in the Lotus, 55 in Comfort and 55 in Kerrville, 65 in New Braunfels and 65 in Seguin. It's cool, but we are seeing areas of fog out there, especially on the east side of town out toward JBSA Randolph. Visibility is down to a mile. It's it's down to a mile and a quarter in New Braunfels. You will see some fog if you're driving around the city early this morning. Right now, visibility is the worst uh, out toward Kerrville, where it's down to about a quarter of a mile. Kerrville, of course, is one of the cooler spots on the map early this morning. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Junction as well. But let's talk about these healthy rainfall amounts. This is a look at measured rainfall from official sites, and we've also thrown in a couple of uh, backyard uh, rain gauge readings there. But look at that, more than seven inches of rain at San Antonio International Airport since Wednesday, almost six in Hallettsville, nearly three in Yavaldi, uh, more than six in Hondo as well. Uh, and a, a closer view here, what you'll notice is that we've seen some very healthy rain, uh, even just locally. These are a couple of spots uh, that were measured in, in some folks backyard near the SeaWorld area, potentially 10 and a half inches uh, since Wednesday and near St. Hegwood, a little bit more than seven inches of rain out toward Temperwood Park close to seven inches there near Stone Oak a little bit more than nine and near Castroville about six and a half inches of rain and again this is since Wednesday so it's about three rainfall events over the course of a few days since Wednesday very healthy rain on the map and very healthy rain for the Edwards aquifer this blue here is the recharge zone of the Edwards aquifer you can see so many of these areas received uh, three to four to six inches of rainfall even in some spots in northern Bear County up to eight inches of of rainfall since Wednesday and the aquifer is responding very nicely. It's up five and a half feet nearly over the last 24 hours and it's continuing to rise. We're now seeing our uh, uh, height of the aquifer well at about 662 feet, which is well above even uh, what we typically see for stage one water restrictions. But the number we watch for stage two and stage one water restrictions is the 10 day average, and that is still very low. So we're still under stage two water restrictions. And of course, we'll update you if that changes. Now in the weather pattern, thankfully, this big upper level low that brought us all the much needed rain, but flooding issues is moving off to the east and in its wake we're going to have a pretty nice day here uh, as that low continues to push off to the east. After this morning fog, we'll see some sunshine. Now the ground is saturated, especially around San Antonio in the metro area. That is going to evaporate and actually put a little bit more humidity into the air. So it is going to be a touch muggy today, and it is going to be pretty warm in the afternoon. In fact, around San Antonio, we'll see high temperatures in the upper 80s. But look out toward Del Rio, 98 for the high temperature in Del Rio today, 97 in uh, Carrizo Springs, 98 in Catula, 101 in La so it is going to be a toasty day. At least we're going to see the sunshine. So just to summarize, here's the forecast for you at 10. Fog will be lifting in the area. will be breezy at noon with south southwest winds at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25. Warm with a high temperature of 87 and will be mild tonight with temperatures in the uh, 70s. Looking ahead to tomorrow, another toasty day and then a front will arrive on Tuesday. That'll set our high temperatures back down to near 80 degrees. We'll only have a small chance for an isolated shower or storm on Tuesday. So again, we're not worried about flooding issues. We'll have cool mornings in the week ahead after that front moves through and warm afternoons. Much different looking week. Much we had. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 617, 62 degrees out. Well, more than eight out of 10 young Americans are concerned about the health of our planet. Still ahead on GMSA, why experts say Gen Z fears environmental damage and ecological disasters. And global cases of COVID are surging as they are easing across the United States. We have the latest on COVID cases around the country and around the world.
According to the CDC, more than 103 million Americans are now fully vaccinated against COVID-19, but the rate of vaccines being administered per day has declined. We need to get to 80 percent population immunity, you know, by as we approach fall, because if not, I think we're going to be in trouble next winter. Some places seeing an increase in patients. The University of Kansas Health System opening a second COVID-19 ICU for the first time in months. Nobody wants to wear a mask. We have not wanted to wear a mask, but the virus does not care about that. Meanwhile, there are signs life is slowly returning to normal. The Kentucky Derby welcoming back fans following last year's Run for the Roses held in September with no spectators. For those traveling, Delta Airlines is the last U.S. carrier to announce it will begin selling middle seats on its aircraft. But overseas, the situation in India continues to worsen. The country setting another daily global record with almost 402,000 new cases. Officials there opening vaccinations to all adults in hopes of stopping the spread. The U.S. announcing a travel restriction from India on Tuesday, cutting off entry to most people who've traveled there in the last two weeks. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Time now is 622, 62 degrees out. Well, the right. NFL draft is over. Let's go. You can take it from here. <laughs> no, you got it. All right, we have three San Antonio guys headed to the pros. We're going to break it down next. Good morning. Welcome back and go Spurs. Go Silver and Black back at home taking on the Philadelphia 76ers tonight. They had a break yesterday and hopefully the Spurs have a little extra motivation chip on the shoulder after that 143 140 overtime loss to the Celtics. So hopefully tonight they score a big win. Tip off starts 7 p.m. here at home AT&T Center. Pro football coverage powered by Davis. All right, Walker. the 2021 NFL draft officially over. We made it through all the rounds and we have at least three San Antonio guys headed to the next level. Let's start with Texas and Steel Knight grad and great Caden Stearns drafted in the fifth round 152 overall by the Denver Broncos. Number seven, bringing it big. Next up, Smithson Valley alum Trayvon Merrick. He is now a member of the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders. Merrig, who went to TCU, widely considered one of the best, if not the best, safety in this year's draft and expected to go by many in the first round. Instead, the Raiders trading up five spots in the second, getting him 43 overall. And then the last one, one of the most well-known players across the state of Texas. Here he was right on draft night. That's the Vikings. Texas A&M quarterback. Kellen Mond, second pick in the third round, 66 overall, grabbed by the Minnesota Vikings, one of the top players on the Vikings' big board, according to the GM of the Vikings, Rick Spielman. So as a member of the NFC North, here's fun. Mond will get to see Packers linebacker, former Reagan quarterback Ty Summers, at least twice a season. Mond says he has been training for this day a very long time. So congratulations to all the fans. And of course, congratulations to all the families and all these young men. Big step to a long career, hopefully. Yeah, congrats on representing San Antonio. There you go, football of Texas, boom. <laughs> 627, 62 degrees out. All right, big news in terms of SpaceX. Our astronauts are here at home. We're gonna break it all down in the next half hour. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday, 6.30 this Sunday, May 2nd. Big shout out, I think next weekend is Mother's Day. Oh my gosh. I <laughs> uh, know. I just want to make sure everyone's prepared out there. Thank you for preparing yeah. me. You heard it, Mom. All right. I'm, I'm getting prepared. <laughs> well, what do they say? April showers bring May flowers? And, and Sarah, you know, from all that rain, I think my flowers, it was like too much rain. They almost looked like drunk, like they were all wilty. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did see a flash flooding in the area, especially yesterday during the midday hours. Right around lunch, we uh, there were several high water rescues. So too much of a good thing, but... We'll take any little bit of rain that we can get, knowing how dry it's going to be in the summer months. I, I love this picture of downtown San Antonio right now. Hey, Max and Sarah, what can you see on the horizon there? You see a tower. Well, yeah. It's Look a little closer. You see Almodome? What, see that? And what are we looking at? It's some fog. Oh. Oh, I was, <laughs> I was like, like, I can just start listing the architecture if you'd like. What's the specific answer here? We yes. failed. <laughs> 
I guess I am the meteorologist <laughs> here. <laughs> but we, yeah, we are seeing a little bit of fog uh, out there this morning, right on the horizon around downtown San Antonio, and that fog is thicker elsewhere. It's 61 degrees at the airport. Winds are calm. Dew points in the temperatures are right next to each other, and that's why we're seeing some of that fog. Visibility down to half a mile in Kerrville, down to half a mile at JBSA Randolph, so a little bit uh, foggier the further east and northeast you go, down to three miles in New Braunfels. And if you live out on ranch land or uh, live out a little bit further from the city, you might see some fog as well. The ground is just so saturated from all of the rain we've seen. And as it evaporates up into the air today, it's actually going to keep our humidity a little higher uh, in spite of the fact that we are going to get a southwest wind. Now, usually when we get a west wind, we dry out, uh, but it's just We've seen so much rain over the last three days that it's going to stay a little muggy today, uh, but the fog is going to lift around 10 for those who are seeing the fog, and then it's going to be a mostly sunny and warm day. High temperature of 87. It's nice to see some sunshine just before we end the weekend. Looking ahead to the week, we do have another cool front moving through, but I think you're going to like all the sun you're seeing. And coming up in the forecast, I'm going to talk about how this could potentially really help our drought situation. Max and Sarah. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Well, yesterday, Election Day, Mayor Ron Nuremberg will get his third term. Prop A passed, Prop B did not. We had a slew of city council elections, 10 to be exact. We know some are going to be uh, set in stone for the next couple of years, but some are going to a runoff. We have about five runoffs. A race for the District 3 seat now heads to a runoff. Our Alicia Beretta is live with the results and the candidates. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, we know that current councilwoman Rebecca Villagran has reached her term limits of four, so she's out of the equation. But still, there are two candidates with very familiar names who are still in the run for that seat. So those two candidates, candid candidates Phyllis Villagran and Thomas Uresti, will now head into a runoff election. Both Villagran and Uresti held watch parties on the south side last night. They say with so many people running for District 3 seat, they knew they had to prepare for a runoff election. Both candidates hope their individual experience will make them a great addition to the city council. Phyllis says she understands the needs of the people in District 3, and Uresti says it's his experience that makes him stand out. I am committed to the district, and I know that they deserve quality representation and leadership at the city council dais. For the past two years, I saw women on the dais working together and getting things done, and I felt and I knew that I could be part of it. I've been serving the community now for about 25 years as an elected official. We have an opportunity for, for it gives me an opportunity to continue serving my community for hopefully another eight years. Phyllis says she hopes to tackle infrastructure concerns as well as health inequities of seniors. Uresti says he plans to continue vaccination efforts while getting the economy back up and running and children back in schools. That runoff election is set for June 5th. And in the race for city council seat for District 4, incumbent Adriana Rocha Garcia took the win, securing 70 percent of the vote. Rocha Garcia says she hopes this second term will allow her to accomplish more goals, the ones that she had set for her first round. There is a lot that needs to happen still in District 4. We've started moving on a lot of things. COVID put kind of a little bit on a damper in a lot of the plans that I had for the first term. So I'm looking forward to continuing and carrying out the commitments uh, to our residents in the second term. Shirley Gonzalez is another councilwoman who has also reached her limit on terms. And now the race for District 5 is also a hotly contested one. We know that last night with yesterday's elections, those totals came in 31 percent of the votes for Terry Castillo and 15 percent for Rudy Gonzalez. So next, Patty Santos has a wrap on the runoff with those candidates. Two community activists head to a runoff for District 5. The historic Westside community had 11 candidates vying for the position held by Shirley Gonzalez, who has termed out. Terry Castillo took the lead very early on this race. She's a substitute teacher and organizer in healthcare and housing. She'll be facing off against Rudy Lopez, who also has deep roots in the community. He's been involved in his neighborhood association and sat on several city commissions. They both say their focus is on giving the West Side a voice. 
folks are concerned about neighborhood destabilization. So what we need to do is mitigate community displacement by investing in programs that already exist, um, but that will help our neighbors stay in their homes. Top three things that I'll be focusing on is um, senior services, after school programs, and of course infrastructure. Uh, COVID relief is in there too as well. Councilwoman Shirley Gonzalez is endorsing Lopez. Candidates Norberto Jeremy Landing and Anthony Gress trailed behind Lopez. The runoff election is June 5th. Reporting for GMSA, Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Well, moving on to the race for District 6 City Council, incumbent Councilwoman Melissa Caballo Haverda has won her seat by 55% of the vote. Irina Rudolph took the second place with 28% of the vote and Robert Hernandez at 8%. All right, and moving on to District 7, Anna Sandoval, 71% of the vote, and that locks her in for another term. Patricia Ann Varello, second place, 29%. And in the election for District 8 City Council seat, there he is, Manny, uh, incumbent Manny Pelias has won re-election. All right, now this is far from all that we covered. If you want to know more about all the results in yesterday's election and what comes next, we have that right now. Just head over to ksat.com slash vote underscore 2021. All right, well, the United Way of San Antonio Bear County has a mission to unite the community to identify and solve our most critical issues. During the last year, it appears that more and more issues are coming to light. That is why this morning on Leading SA, 8 a.m., Chris Martin, the United Way of San Antonio and Bear County CEO, is going to join us live. So if you have any questions or concerns you'd like addressed, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center continues to have extremely low blood supply. That is why they are hosting a blood drive today. They say they need at least 600 donors every day to meet that seven day supply. So if you'd like to donate, if you can, you should make an appointment to donate blood today at the Smoothie King on Bandera Road from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. And another blood drive is at the St. John Newman Catholic Church from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. You can make an appointment by calling that number on the top of your screen there, 210-731-5590, or visiting the website, southtexasblood.org. All right, also happening today, if you're looking to treat yourself and treat your bestie this weekend, San Antonio Zoo has you covered. Treat yourself. <laughs> All current San Antonio Zoo members can bring a friend to the zoo for free in honor of the zoo's Bring a Friend Free Day oh. promotion. The offer is valid from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. to claim a free ticket for your BFF, all you need to do is show your zoo membership card and a valid ID at the zoo's front gate. When you arrive, this is when you learn who your true friends are. There you go. And Sarah Spivey says it is going to be a fantastic day to do that. Time now is 639, 62 degrees out. Well, no more movie critics. Oh. oh, gosh. Still ahead on GMSA. Why Americans are twice as likely to listen to social media Ooh. for TV recommendations than the experts. I just go to you, to be honest. Good choice. And four astronauts here back at home, home being Earth. Uh, this is after the Dragon capsule named Resilience splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico earlier this morning. We have the details next. 62 degrees. Oh, there's that fog Sarah Spivey was talking about, that line on the horizon there, but she says that should clear off pretty soon and we should have a beautiful day. She'll have our full Sunday forecast when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. A big day in history, a big day for the space race. SpaceX delivering four astronauts safely back to Earth. Now this is exciting. The Dragon capsule named Resilience splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico early Sunday after a six month stay at the International Space Station. Infrared cameras tracked the capsule as it re-entered the atmosphere. All four main parachutes could be seen deploying just before landing. This is the first nighttime splashdown of a crewed capsule since Apollo 8 back in 1968. This marks the second successful astronaut launch for Elon Musk's company. And according to a new survey, climate change, racism and social justice concerns are affecting Gen Z's physical and mental health. So the survey showed more than eight out of 10 young Americans are concerned about the health of the planet. Racism and social justice were the highest concern amongst them, 62%. Climate change coming in at second, 47%. Experts say this is causing young Americans to experience eco-anxiety. That's the fear of environmental damage or an ecological disaster. Well, one psychologist says eco-anxiety may cause mental health concerns and could be compared to PTSD. 
All right, so when it comes to TV show recommendations, a new study by one poll suggests Americans are twice as likely to trust random social media users over professional critics. For the record, I don't trust professional critics. I trust my friends. Like me. Sure. <laughs> Researchers say most people turn to YouTube over Rotten Tomatoes. The survey showed a majority of people prefer their close friends' opinions over their family members. Whoa. But those who watch TV with their friends have to be cautious of how they react. That's because many respondents say they don't want to know any hints about what may be coming. Mm. Researchers say 44% say if they could only pick one form of media for the rest of their lives, they choose video over audio. That means nearly half would prefer watching a movie or show over reading a book. The survey also showed women are less likely to judge someone based on what they recommend to watch. Uh, not this woman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that that study. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't really, I've never really liked movie critics because like sometimes they take some movies that I think are super cute yeah. and good. I was like, really? I thought that was cute. <sighs> yeah. Uh, but it is fun to watch them on YouTube and things like that. So of course. not trying to take away from that, but yeah, I'm pretty judgy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look at this rainfall map. Uh, this is the map of rainfall since Wednesday. And just to put some numbers here for you, at the airport officially yesterday, we saw a little bit shy of two inches of rain. That brings our total since Wednesday to more than seven inches of rainfall. And it's really impressive when you consider that that brings our yearly total so far to almost 11 inches of rain. That means that since Wednesday, We've seen almost 70% of this year's rainfall so far. So yeah, what a big uh, series of rain events we've seen. And we're actually now above the average since January 1st by almost three inches of rain. That little western section along 1604 there, that black bullseye right there, that's indicative of potentially 10 plus inches of rain in those areas. And this is really, is really going to help our drought situation. Extreme drought in these areas in red, moderate drought in the areas in orange that extreme drought also uh, covers our western our eastern communities out toward Gonzales and near Lavaca County and then watch as I overlay the rainfall since Wednesday on this you can see just how many of these areas are going to be seeing healthy rain now we officially get the drought monitor uh, on Thursdays so we'll have an update for you that drought monitor on Thursday should cover the rainfall since Wednesday and I hope to see some big improvements there Outside right now, uh, it's uh, clear in the atmosphere above, but we do have some fog at the surface, 61 degrees, and that's why you're seeing that mostly cloudy reading at the airport. Uh, we can see that visibility is down to less than a half a mile at JBSA Randolph out to the east up toward New Braunfels. Visibility is down to three miles, down to three quarters of a mile in Kerrville, and you can actually see the fog on some of our trans guide images. This is 35 at Topperwine there. As you're heading up 35 outside of Bear County, you can see the fog as you get closer and closer to uh, 1604. So just be careful if you have to head out there early this morning. Uh, there are some areas of fog. It's cool in Rock Springs at 55, 54 in Kerrville. It's 61 here in San Antonio, 64 in New Braunfels, 62 in Pleasanton. All of that rain and that big source of that rain, that upper level low is off to our east. And in its wake, we're going to have winds turn around to the southwest today uh, and they'll get pretty breezy uh, and we'll see plenty of sunshine too as soon as this fog lifts. Now the catch is the ground is so saturated that as the water evaporates from the ground, it's going to go into the atmosphere and actually make it feel pretty muggy today. Uh, so it's going to be warm and a little muggy too. 87 for the high temperature here in San Antonio, but very hot out toward the west. 98 in Del Rio, 96 in Eagle Pass, 97 in Carrizo Springs, 98 in Catula. It will not necessarily be muggy in those areas out to the west, but around San Antonio around that I-35 corridor, even up into the hill country. You can expect it to be just a little humid today, but at least we're going to see the sun. Uh, 87 for that high temperature today. Tomorrow morning, we'll wake up at a 66, top off at 92 tomorrow, uh, and a front will arrive on Tuesday morning. That'll only bring a small chance, 20% for an isolated shower or storm. Other than that, the week looks sunny. Going to be hard to find very much rain over the next seven days, and I think we can take a pause on the rain for a while, guys. Sunny days. Chasing mm -hmm. that.
Uh, yeah, that's all yeah. you guys. <laughs> all right, 649, 62 degrees out. We continue with our election results coverage. Next on GMSA, the results for District 9 and 10. Welcome back. We continue our election coverage. So incumbent city councilman John Courage is fighting to keep his position in District 9. This is perhaps one of the strongest competitions for a city council member. One of those competitors, Patrick Von Dolan, who made his third attempt to win over the seat. And this time it's a close race. So here are the results. Courage says he's feeling confident going into the possible runoff. You see there he took 47% of the vote. Patrick Von Dolan, 36%. And Eric Moe at 12%. But I'm not deterred. I feel good about it. We came out on top. We were many thousands of votes, of votes ahead of the second person. So uh, I feel like that shows that we've got the strong, solid support to continue to serve our district. And it is looking like incumbent councilman Clayton Perry is going for his third term. Uh, he won with about, uh, let's see, 54 percent of the vote, and he went up against four challengers and coming out of District 10. So taking a look at those results, Perry actually faced Ezra Johnson in a runoff back in 2017, eventually taking the win. Perry says he's getting ready to work for the people of San Antonio. I feel ecstatic, you know, and it's not about me. It's about the neighbors here in District 10. It's about my staff that really care for my neighbors and do a great job of customer service. And that's what I'm all about and looking out for the neighbors across District 10, and not only District 10, but the entire city. All right, there we go. We have full coverage of all the elections, city council, propositions A and B, of course the mayor's race, and so many other elections in our local cities and counties in our surrounding areas. Just head to KSAT.com. We'll be right back. Just a quick wrap of those election results before you go. Mayor Ron Narenbrook took home the win for the mayor race. Proposition B did not pass and Prop A did pass. We have all that info, including the five city council runoffs and other local city and county elections on our website. Just head to ksat.com slash vote underscore 2020. Hey, good morning. Coming up on GMA, the efforts to vaccinate young Americans for the first time younger patients make up the largest group of COVID-19 hospitalizations. Meanwhile, the U.S. is now restricting travel from India as that country sees a massive spread in cases, plus three dead and one injured in a shooting at a casino in Wisconsin. What we're learning right here this morning. And finally, the historic splashdown, the SpaceX Dragon Cruise dramatic return to Earth. We'll tell you all about it coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. All right, taking a last look at Trans Guide. Not too much going on out there. Not too many vehicles on the road, but if you are out and about, if you got to head to church soon, make sure to drive safe and be smart. A much different look now than what we saw yesterday, Sarah Spivey. Yeah, right you had 35 at San Pedro and you saw the underpass that was completely flooded yesterday uh, and we do have some areas of fog out there especially off uh, to the east and to the north JBSA Randolph visibility down to half a mile uh, so if you are in the eastern half of Bear County or if you're heading up I-35 toward New Braunfels and or even up I-10 toward Kerrville you're going to want to watch out for some fog this morning but that fog is going to lift and we're going to be left with a mostly sunny beautiful day a little bit on the warm and muggy side 87 for the high temperature. It's going to be breezy too. Uh, southwest winds at 10 to 20 gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Uh, so uh, so again a really nice day. Nice to be able to dry out a little bit, uh, but it will be muggy. Tomorrow will be at 92 degrees for the high temperature uh, and then Tuesday we're going to have a front move through that'll cool us down a little bit, but it's not going to bring a good chance for rainfall only 20% and in the seven day forecast things look nice and dry for us and I think we deserve uh, at least a week of dry weather. Now we don't want to get too comfortable because we know how hot, dry it gets in the summer and how hot and how hot <laughs> it gets in the summer too. Thank All you Sarah. Right. We'll see you back here 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now on Good Morning San Antonio at 8 a.m., the people of Bear County have spoken. We are taking a look at those final election results, who won, who lost, what won and what lost, and what is still left to be determined. And this morning's leading SA segment, we are joined by the CEO of our local United Way chapter to talk about programs aimed to help so many families in and around our area, what you need to know and how you can take part. 
And yesterday was a weird one here in San Antonio. We saw a lot of rain, some flooding. Today looking a lot different. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. 8 o'clock this Sunday, May 2nd. Yesterday was a whirlwind of a day. We had the storms, and then we had Election Day. I know. It, it was a really busy day in our newsroom, out and about. The sun did come out. Mm -hmm. um, I know, Sarah, that there's some areas like those creek beds are still a little flooded, but yeah, that's OK. Some of the uh, rivers in creeks, local creeks are pretty swollen. In fact, there is some minor flooding going on Medina River uh, on the south side of town near 281. Uh, and then also San Antonio River at Elmendorf, some minor flooding there as well. So some of those rivers are going to be a little swollen, but we're going to be enjoying a sunny day here in San Antonio. Take a look outside right now, a beautiful city view sunny and it is uh, 62 degrees outside right now but the dew points are pretty high as well so the temperature and the dew point are right next to each other it you can see you can in some cases see some of the humidity in the form of fog now fog locally around San Antonio has improved we were seeing visibilities down to less than half a mile out in our, the eastern part of the county but up toward New Braunfels out toward Kerrville visibility is down to a half a mile so there are some areas where the fog uh, is a little dense like up near Kerrville, but the rest of us are going to be seeing tons of sunshine today. That fog is lifting uh, and it's going to be a warm but breezy day. Winds will be from the south southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusts up to 25 miles per hour. And because the ground is so saturated, it is going to be a little muggy in the afternoon. 87 for the high temperature coming up. I'll show you the aquifer and how that's responded really well to the rainfall. Sarah Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, the votes are in and this morning we have the results. We begin this morning with how San Antonio voted in our local elections. Mayor Ron Nirenberg easily won a third term last night against 13 challengers, gathering a total of 62% of the vote. That's right. Our Garrett Berenger tells us this is a very different story from his last election. It was an easy night for Mayor Ron Nuremberg with the first wave of early and absentee ballots, giving him more than twice the votes of his nearest challenger, Greg Brockhouse. A far cry from their 2019 matchup that went to a close runoff. But Nuremberg has benefited from a huge boost in visibility because of his role leading the city through the pandemic, throughout which he's maintained solid approval ratings. And with his win on Saturday night, there won't be a runoff election this time. I mean, it's, it's great. We can get on with the business of governing, and uh, that's what I'm here to do. And we've got a clear path in front of us in terms of ensuring, number one, we can get this pandemic behind us, and then we get on with um, implementing a strong economic recovery for our city and uh, ensuring that nobody is left behind in that process. For his part, Brockhouse says he's done running and noted it was a tough time to run a race on the back end of the pandemic and with the mayor on TV every day. But we got into it because we wanted, we felt like it, we, we, there was a path. It just didn't materialize and some things don't go your way on campaigns. And you could try as much as you want, but certain things have to fall in place and, and it just didn't happen for us. And that's okay, that's okay. Well, there was a celebratory mood at the mayor's watch party. He did seem ready to jump back into the swing of things, saying that there is no relaxing in the mayor's job, even when there's not a pandemic on. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Now moving over to one of the most controversial items on the ballot, Proposition B. The measure that would have stripped collective bargaining rights from the city's police officers does not pass by two percentage points. So take a look. The no's take it by about 3,400 votes. A little background of the proposition. Fix SAPD, a police reform group, formed less than a year ago, but the group was still able to get the measure on the ballot. However, they could not drum up enough support to get Prop B to pass. SAPD Union President Danny Diaz says he is open to having conversations to improve relations between his department and some of these reform groups. I'm ready and willing to talk to anyone and everyone. Uh, we have to open up that dialogue and have that communication to where we can fix things. And with the proposition struck down, the union prepares to resume contract talks with the city's negotiating team. The current contract expires at the end of September. The City Council District 1 race will head to a runoff between incumbent Roberto Trevino and candidate Mario Bravo. Trevino held a watch party at a tire shop north of downtown for family, friends and supporters. He is running for his fourth and final term. Last year, Trevino's office created a homeless outreach program, something he feels passionate about. It brought different agencies together and they work with homeless individuals to guide them towards services. He says his team is working hard on different projects. 
We established the first uh, citywide outreach efforts. We established uh, expanding the, the ID recovery program. Uh, we, moved, we created the first ever pilot uh, mobile hub over at our field office. People are getting the help that they need. Meanwhile, Mario Bravo held his party for supporters at Bruno's Dive Bar in Southtown. He has been one of the candidates going strong in the race. He is a project manager for the Environmental Defense Fund. He says people want change, and the election numbers show that. In regards to helping the homeless population, he says what the district is doing right now, it's not working, he says. He says the district needs to do a better job in bringing experienced professionals together to help the homeless population. The pandemic has shown a light on a lot of the inequities we have in our community and I think it's a great opportunity for our community to pivot and see how can we create a more resilient community going forward. And so that can be economic resilience with economic diversity and better paying jobs. Now in District 2 of runoff, the big story, a 26 year old teacher leading the race and now headed to a runoff with his former boss, the incumbent Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan. Courtney Friedman spent most of her evening at Jalen McKee's Rodriguez's watch party. The energy was high here all night long. Jalen McKee Rodriguez at 26 years old was by far the youngest candidate in this crowded race of 12 people. He received the most votes and is headed to a runoff with incumbent Jada Andrew Sullivan. He has a close connection with the councilwoman. He used to be her District 2 communications director and is now her competitor. He says that job and the relationships he built there are what encouraged him to run in the first place. District 2 deserves way more than we've gotten in the past. We deserve to have candidates that we're excited about. We deserve to have you know, people who are going to fight for working class families, for the people who do not get fought for, people who are going to say no to developer money. We caught up with Andrew Sullivan at her watch party just streets away at Smoke Barbecue downtown. She was surrounded by a lot of supporters as well and was in great spirit, saying she's ready to continue campaigning for some specific issues. Economic development, uplifting our district through education of how to actively advocate for themselves and then making sure that we are bringing in the resources to speak to our youth, to speak to our seniors, and to speak to infrastructure and making sure that we are in a momentum that is progressing forward. Both candidates have a very similar platform, saying that there is an obvious and strong voice from District 2 community members about what they want and what they need. Reporting from the East Side, Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Courtney. The United Way of San Antonio Bear County has a mission to unite the community to identify and solve some of our most critical issues. Now, during the last year, it appears that more and more of these issues are coming to light. Well, joining us in today's leading essay segment is Chris Martin, the United Way of San Antonio Bear County CEO. Good morning, Chris. Thank you so much for taking your time to join with us this morning. Good morning, Sarah and Max. Thanks so much for having me this morning. So the last year or so has been a whirlwind to say the least. What has the pandemic looked like from your perspective in terms of missions and initiatives and what problems became more apparent? Uh, thanks for the question. And certainly the mission has remained the same. And that really has been about, as you said before, uniting our community to, to address our most critical issues in, in San Antonio and Bear County. And what it's really caused, uh, forced us to do was to pivot and to think differently about the way we executed. And just a couple of examples of that Early on were uh, our initiative to provide emergency child care uh, scholarships for our uh, essential workers. Ultimately, they had to go to work. We had to make sure that their children were safe and taken care of. So we uh, partnered with a number of organizations throughout the community to do that. And, and also our initiative called Get Shift Done. And that was uh, focused on helping those from our hospitality industry Earn a, earn a wage while they were providing uh, services as volunteers at a number of our food pantries throughout the community to, to help provide food for those that needed it. And, you know, the, the issues that became you know, much more apparent were the employment issues, uh, the lack of skills in our community and something we need to address as an entire community. Uh, food insecurity was certainly an issue. And then also violence and abuse were heightened as, as stress was probably at uh, one of its all-time highs uh, for our community. And we, we saw that through our 211 helpline. Uh, we had a we had 150% increase at, uh, in the number of calls that are on our information and referral line at, at the height of the pandemic. And Chris, you talked about some of those issues. So other issues, workforce development, economic stability, and wage inequities are three other issues you're working on as, as well right now. So what programs are in place and what should the public know? 
thanks for asking. And a, a number of those, uh, certainly workforce training and, and, and comprehensive work, workforce training, but certification programs, uh, helping people further ed their education, whether through whether that's through GEDs uh, or, or uh, attaining their GED or, or working towards a college degree. So a number there, but also things like financial coaching and helping people improve their, their credit scores so that we support them in doing that and, and support them in, uh, in reducing their debt so that they're in a much better position from a financial standpoint for their family. And then on the, on the, the wage inequities for, for women of color in our community, it's about making sure that we're, number one, an awareness campaign, but number two, it goes back to those training programs. Make sure that we're, doing, we're, we're implementing training programs so that we can help uh, women in this community, all people in this community for that matter, uh, attain greater skills to the workforce, which ultimately leads to greater pay. And, and we're certainly focused on the ALICE population, and that is, ALICE stands for um, asset limited, income constrained, but employed. It's really the working poor in this community that we're trying to, to work closely with to help put them in a better position for financial stability. All right, Mr. Martin, well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate your time. You can find his full interview on ksat.com later this morning. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Thank you. Time now is 8-11, 62 degrees out. Go Spurs, go! That's right, still ahead. San Antonio Spurs getting ready for another time on the court. We are going to explain the details, what you need to know before tip-off. Plus, more opportunities to get the COVID-19 vaccine right here in San Antonio, where you can go this week without an appointment. In Bernie, preparations are underway for a benefit concert in honor of Texas DPS trooper Chad Walker, who was killed in the line of duty. All the details and how you can help just ahead here on GMSA. Right, you saw it out there. Beautiful sun is out and right here taking a live look at the Alamo City. Much different look right now than it was 24 hours ago. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. Heading to Bernie, a nonprofit hosting a benefit concert and raffle for a Texas DPS trooper, Chad Walker. He died after being shot in an ambush back in March. The group Task Force VOSPO, which stands for Veteran-Owned Small Business Organization, is hosting the event today at the Compadres Hill Country Cocina, and it starts at noon. That's right. Alicia Barrera joining us live from Bernie with a look ahead at what visitors can expect. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Max and Sarah. Well, they definitely want this event to be big because every single dollar raised during this benefit concert will go back to the family of Texas Trooper Chad Walker. And he was shot in on March 26, shot multiple times and then died a few days later due to those wounds. Live with me, we have the president of the nonprofit Task Force Vosbo, Mark. Good morning. You're also the owner here at Compadres. What can people expect or how about we start with this? Why was it so important for you to to organize this event with your team? Actually, uh, I had a buddy of mine that reached out to me a couple of days prior to Trooper Chad Walker after he passed away. He reached out to me via Facebook and uh, he said, hey, a buddy of mine just got shot. You know, he's in Grosbeck, Texas. He's a DPS trooper. Um, can compadres do something for his family? And this was news to me because apparently this just happened hours before. So, uh, I had to, I needed time to kind of grasp what was happening. So I said, you know what, let, keep me posted. Let's see what's going on. And then we'll go from there, right? I think a day passed. And then I was out here on my smoker that day. Uh, and uh, I got on Facebook just to update a couple of things on the compadres page. And uh, my feed was just flooded with the passing of Chad Trooper. I mean, uh, uh, Chad Walker. So when that happened, it just kind of, I take it personal only because there was uh, a lot of children left, you know, from his family. He had a 15-year-old, two twin daughters, seven-year-olds, and a two-month-old. So I reached out to my board and I said, you know what, we need to do something for the family. And so now this event is going to take place again, noon to five. The details are on your screen right now. It's going to be happening in the parking lot of Compadres Hill Country Casino. There's more than enough parking. And you guys are also having raffle items. We'll go into detail with that. And also a celebrity sighting because he's on the board. He sits with Task, uh, task Force Vosbo. So again, we'll be sticking around here in Bernie to bring you all the details on this benefit concert. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. It's 818 and 63 degrees. All right, go Spurs, go. Just ahead, we are breaking down what you need to know before this Spurs tip-off here at home later this evening. 
And guess what? The aquifer responding very well to our recent rains. In just the last 24 hours, it's been up almost a foot. And in fact, since Wednesday, it's been up by 10 feet. The 10 day average, 652.8. 10 day average is actually above uh, what the trigger is for stage two water restrictions, but we're still in stage two water restrictions until a vote is cast to remove us from it. So still have to observe those watering restrictions, but the aquifer doing well, and we'll continue to see it rise as it's rising at the moment. Coming up, we'll talk about rainfall totals in a neighborhood view in just a few minutes. Happy Sunday, go Spurs, go! The Spurs, they are falling in the rankings, but today they have a chance to make it up. They are hosting the 76ers tonight, 7 o'clock AT&T Center. Right now, DeJounte Murray questionable with left knee soreness, but we got to get back up the playoff rankings if we want to make the play-in tournament. So all we can say is, Sarah Costa? Go Spurs, go! Go Spurs, go! Sadly, though... It's not going to be a great night to stay in because the sun's going to be out. It is a much different look from oh, yesterday. Oh, Sarah, this, this is nice. I mean, we needed the rain, but we today's going to be a nice day to catch up on your outdoor weekend stuff. Yes, exactly. Uh, now, the river, some of the local rivers are still a little swollen from, from the rains uh, in local creeks. So just be careful uh, today if you're heading out. But generally, it's going to be a beautiful day to be outside. It's 62 degrees at the airport, 63 at JVSA Randolph, 63 in, for New Braunfels, 63 at Bernie Stage Airfield, still in the 50s. Up in the Hill Country, 56 in Kerrville and 57 in Comfort. Earlier we had some fog locally, but now that fog is starting to lift. Visibility has improved even out toward New Braunfels, where it's up to about uh, five miles. And as far as rainfall goes, the ground is totally saturated from the rains over the last few days. This is a look at rainfall amounts since Wednesday from official uh, rain gauges and some of your local rain gauges as well in your backyard. We've been able to put some of these numbers on there officially at the airport more than seven inches of rain since Wednesday out to the east toward Hallettsville about six inches of rainfall there in Hondo six inches of rain as well even toward Del Rio more than two and a half inches of rain more than four inches of rain in Kerrville more than four and a half out near Canyon Lake a neighborhood view here and the real bullseyes of, of rain is we've we all got rain good rain but the real bullseye really goes from Timberwood Park area all the way to the west side of town out near SeaWorld and someone's backyard. We've seen uh, potentially more than 10 inches of rain there, uh, more than seven in St. Hedwig, uh, almost six, uh, more than six and a half in Seguin and almost three and a half in New Braunfels. But this is the part that's really great too. When we outline the Edwards Aquifer recharge zone, you can see why the aquifer is steadily rising. So much rain has fallen over that area in the last three days. We needed it. We are so happy for our local ranchers and farmers who are enjoying that drink of water. Now, in its wake, though, we're looking at sunny skies. This is a wide view of the weather pattern. There's that upper level low that was just hanging out to our west and brought us all of that rain. It's finally moving on off to the east. Uh, and again, today, we're going to have a pretty nice day. It's going to be nice and sunny outside. It'll be breezy with a southwesterly wind. It is going to be warm, though, in the afternoons. Uh, uh, keep in mind, because the ground is saturated, that sun is going to try to evaporate some of that water into the atmosphere and, and create a bit of a muggy atmosphere for us today. Uh, but it is going to be just downright hot out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Cruises Springs, where they got a little bit less rain. High temperatures there close to 100 degrees. Meanwhile, around San Antonio, we'll be looking at the upper 80s for the highs. Uh, 73 at 10, 78 at noon, mostly sunny skies, breezy. Those winds could gust from the south southwest up to 25 miles per hour. Warm and a little muggy in the afternoon. 87 for the high and a mild evening. Let's take a look at the week ahead. A lot of sun on the map there. Uh, we are going to see a front that will arrive on um, Tuesday morning and that's going to drop our highs from the 90s on Monday to near 80 degrees on Tuesday. We'll have cool mornings Wednesday and Thursday. Warm afternoons, tons of sunshine in the next seven days, guys. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 826, 63 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, we're looking at who claimed the seats on the San Antonio City Council and who is still fighting for one. Plus, firefighters rescuing three people out of a build burning building overnight. We have the latest on the conditions of one of the bill of victims and the latest on the investigation. Good 
morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Acosta. It's May 2nd. It is May 2nd. You know what they say? What? Well, we're going to talk about April showers in just a little bit. But before <laughs> then, we have some news to tell you about. This is an important story. The life of Texas DPS trooper Chad Walker will be honored today in the Hill Country. Walker was shot multiple times in late March in Limestone County and later died of those gunshot wounds. All right, so that is why today there's a special event in his honor. The event Operation Walker Benefit hosted by the nonprofit Task Force VOSPO, and that actually stands for Veteran Owned Small Businesses uh, Organization. The benefit will feature live music and a lot of raffle items. Our Alicia Bonetta is live in Bernie. Alicia, you mentioned there also might be some celebrity sightings. Yeah, you can't miss him. We have Bill Goldberg here, uh, superstar. Good morning, he's ready. We're not putting up any fights. We're actually inviting the community to come out here. Why is it so important for you to use your voice and encouraging uh, just the community to support Trooper Walker's family? Well, at the end of the day, it's, uh... It's something that everybody should be doing. You know, you get a platform the, such as the one that I've been able to develop. You do as many things as you can do for the community, especially such a tight-knit community like this. And let's be perfectly honest, um, what happened to Officer Walker could happen to any other officer, could happen to any other member of the community. So when someone falls, when someone has a, a not a misstep, but when, a, when something happens, the community is so tight-knit, we come together as a family and as I said officer Walker that's why we're here but next week it could be someone else um, it's being there for the cause and setting a good example for the community so Bill Goldberg is actually part uh, is a special advisor for task force FOSBO and they just launched recently we want to get the details on your screen for today's event so it starts at noon goes on until 5 p.m. adults 25 to get in 10 10 dollars for the kiddos this is taking place at Compadres Hill Country Cocina the address is on your screen and one thing that we do want to know all these proceeds every single dollar is going to go straight back to the family and they're actually going to be here today so you're going to be able to meet them very much looking forward to it. Um, as I said, it's a tight-knit family, the community. We want to welcome them in. We want them to understand 100% why we're here. We're here to help, and we're here to, to, for them to fall back on us. Anything they need, we think that we can provide. So Absolutely. that's why we're here. All right, thank you so much. So again, there you have it, you guys. Noon to 5 p.m. happening in Bernie today. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Goldberg, Alicia, thank you. Well, new this morning, one person is in critical condition after a terrifying house fire on the east side. Just take a look at this. This was the scene of a home near the intersection of South Walters and Martin Luther King Drive just around 11 o'clock last night. Firefighters tell us they arrived to large flames. Three people were inside the time of the fire. Two women were able to get out safely. One person was rescued by firefighters and taken to Bamsey in critical condition. As for the house, it is a total loss and arson investigators are working to figure out how this all started. And also new this morning, a woman in the hospital after San Antonio police tell us she was hit by a vehicle downtown overnight. Officers say it happened just before 1230 a.m. on Alamo and 10th Street. They tell us the woman who is believed to be intoxicated tried crossing the street. She was hit, taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. The driver who is believed to have hit her not intoxicated. And we are still waiting to learn if that driver will be charged. Let's take a look outside with live cam 63 degrees at 834 this morning, shaping up to be a beautiful Sunday, Sarah Spivey. It really is. And, you know, you can see a view of downtown there. It's totally sunny outside. This was my view, though, of downtown earlier this morning. I want to show you all this. Look at that fog that's just hanging over downtown San Antonio. That fog there because, of course, we have had so much rain uh, over the last four days or so, and the ground is saturated, and that fog uh, was created because of uh, the high humidity there close to the surface. Uh, and on top of that, unfortunately, Unfortunately, this pollen count just now updated the high humidity, the saturated ground has made mold skyrocket. Mold is past 16,000 today for the pollen count. That's the one downside to the rain. Also a downside to the rain. Some of the rivers are still pretty swollen. I know there's a flood warning for the Medina River uh, right uh, near 281 South on the south side of Bear County uh, because of minor flooding there at that river. But today's going to be a beautiful day. We'll have breezy winds from the south southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. We'll be able to warm up pretty quickly under mostly sunny skies. 
skies. 87 for the high, just a little muggy, and the sun will set at 811. We'll be looking at a nice and mild evening, too, with temperatures settling down into the 70s. More on how this rain is going to help out our drought conditions coming up soon. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, we continue to share the final election results for Bear County this morning. First up, Proposition A. This would allow for bond money to be used for items beyond public works, and voters have approved it. Next up, Phyllis Villagran and Thomas Uristi are heading for a runoff for District 3C. Our Jaffney Gray spoke with both sides to hear why they feel they should be elected. Both Phyllis Villagran and Tomas Uresti held their own watch parties right here on the south side. And both saying that after finding out so many people were running for District 3 seat, they knew they had to prepare for a runoff election. Phyllis Villagran is hoping to continue carrying the torch as a leader of District 3 after her younger sister, Rebecca Villagran, reached her term limits. She says that she is District 3 and her experience working, serving and living on the south side puts her more in touch with the needs of the district. Tomas Uresti will head into a runoff with Phyllis. He says he hopes his experience as the state representative and school board member shows how much he served the community for decades. Both candidates have their own issues they plan to tackle should they be elected. City streets and lighting and the broadband infrastructure and particularly in the southern sector. So I want us to look at that. The health inequities and making sure that our seniors can live in place where they choose to. The, the most important thing, of course, is the vaccination. And of course, getting the, the economy going back again, get everybody back to school, back to work and get children back into school. Both candidates say that they were prepared to go into a runoff election, which is why they say their campaign teams are not done yet with strategizing. Of course, that runoff election is set for June 5th from District 3. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. Now to the race for City Council seat in District 4, incumbent Adriana Rocha Garcia is the winner, securing 70% of the vote. Rocha Garcia says she hopes this second term will allow her to accomplish goals she had set for the last couple years. There is a lot that needs to happen still in District 4. We've started moving on a lot of things. COVID put kind of a little bit on the damper in a lot of the plans that I had for the first term. So I'm looking forward to continuing and carrying out the commitments uh, to our residents in the second term. And two community activists head for the runoff for District 5 held by Councilwoman Shirley Gonzalez, who's termed out of office. Terry Castillo held on to the lead from early on with 2,073 votes. She says she's been active in organizing fair health care and housing for people in her community. She says District 5 has been moving from crisis to crisis for far too long. She'll be facing off against Rudy Lopez. Lopez has served in several city commissions and his neighborhood association. Supporters say he's very humble about his activism. He's being endorsed by the outgoing councilman Shirley Gonzalez. I'm going to focus on the needs in District 5. I mean, we've got so many needs. We've got, you know, seniors. We've got after-school programs. We've got infrastructure that need repair and we need to upgrade. Folks are concerned about neighborhood destabilization. So what we need to do is mitigate community displacement by investing in programs that already exist, um, but that will help our neighbors stay in their homes. Well, both candidates say they will take their lead from constituents. Candidates Jeremy Landing and Anthony Gress trailed closely behind Lopez in votes. And moving on down the line, District 6, Melissa Cabello Haverda winning with 55% of the vote. Here's what she told us last night. I have a lot of work to continue to do, so I'm grateful that I have an opportunity to continue that work. And I'm, you know, so, so honored that the good people of District 6 thinks that I deserve another term. Councilwoman Anna Sandoval, she won by 71% of the vote with Varela at 29% of the vote. Sandoval says she'll always want to reach more voters. I would always love to win with 100%. My team tells me that's not going to happen as long as there is a, another opponent. So, uh, But I'm, I'm glad that what we're seeing is a vote of confidence, literally, from the District 7 voters. And I take that very seriously. I'm very grateful for it. And there is going to be a lot of work that we still have to do. And in the election for District 8 City Council seat, incumbent Manny Palias winning re-election told us he was so happy and excited to share this moment with his friends, his families and his supporters. But the win was a little bittersweet. 
It is a somber win. Um, let's not forget, thousands of people have died during this last year uh, because of a pandemic. Well, incumbent city councilman John Courage is fighting to keep his position in District 9. This is perhaps one of the strongest competitions for a city council member. So one of those competitors, Patrick Von Dolan, who made his third attempt to win over the seat. And this time it's a close race. Just take a look on your screen. John Courage with 47 percent of the vote. Patrick Von Dolan, 36 percent and Erica Moe at 12 percent. But I'm not deterred. I feel good about it. We came out on top. We were many thousands of votes, of votes ahead of the second person. So uh, I feel like that shows that we've got the strong, solid support to continue to serve our district. All right, rounding out all the city council seats, taking a look at incumbent councilman Clayton Perry securing a third term going against four challengers, but coming out on top for District 10. Perry actually faced Ezra Johnson in a runoff back in 2017, eventually taking that win as well. Perry says he's ready to get to work for the people of San Antonio. I feel ecstatic, you know, and it's not about me. It's about the neighbors here in District 10. It's about my staff that really care for my neighbors and do a great job of customer service. And that's what I'm all about and looking out for the neighbors across District 10, and not only District 10, but the entire city. And so if you have any questions about the numbers, about what comes next, we have all those answers, just head to ksat.com. Time now is 842, 63 degrees out. Well, if you still haven't gotten vaccinated, in just a bit we have all the information and where you can get vaccinated this week in San Antonio with Val and an appointment. Good morning and welcome back. Metro Health now offering even more opportunities to get you and your family vaccinated if you are still looking for one. And good news is you don't even need an appointment. So tomorrow you can get a Pfizer vaccine at the New Life Christian Center off US Highway 90 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or St. Henry Catholic Church off South Florida Street offering the one shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine. That starts at 10 a.m. goes to 6 p.m. Once again, you can just show up. You don't need an appointment. And Sarah Spivey, I checked my rain gauge over the last three-ish days. It's a little over five inches, and I live on the northeast side. That's pretty cool. That is that is awesome. And yeah, there has been a lot of areas that have seen some of the healthiest rainfall we've seen in a long time. At the San Antonio International Airport, we officially recorded uh, since Wednesday seven more than seven inches of rain, and of course yesterday's almost two inches of rain add on to that. Wow, what a healthy rainfall. Even this area that's right out to the west there, that black little color that you see there on your screen, there's indications that up to 10 inches of rain fell in those areas on the west side of town since Wednesday. All in all, since January 1st now, we've had almost 11 inches of rain. Look at that, seven inches since Wednesday, 11 inches since January 1st. That means that almost 70% of our rainfall for the year so far fell in just the last few days. So very healthy and important rainfall. And that brings uh, our precipitation, our annual precipitation so far above average by nearly three inches of rain. Here's how that's really affected the drought conditions. Now this drought monitor is still from Thursday and it didn't it hasn't included any of our rainfall that we've seen since Wednesday extreme drought in these red colors here on the west side of town and out toward Hondo and up into Kerrville and then extreme drought also out across our eastern counties. I'm going to overlay the rain from Wednesday here. And you can just see, wow, look at all of that healthy, healthy rain up to nine inches of rain in spots, nine to 10 inches of rain in spots over that extreme drought all the way up to Kerrville as well. And then out to the east, we've seen healthy rain there. That's going to help out the extreme drought too. On top of it, a lot of this rain fell over the contributing zones of the aquifer and the recharge zone of the aquifer. And the aquifer is responding really well to that. It's up almost two feet just in the last 24 hours. Since Wednesday, it's gone up more than 10 feet, uh, which is really going to help us. We're still under stage two water restrictions. There has to be a vote to bring us out of stage two water restrictions, but the 10 day average is now above 600 
and 50 feet. So some very good news there, uh, even though, of course, that unfortunately led to some flooding issues yesterday. Outside right now, a beautiful view of downtown San Antonio, 62 degrees. We've seen a lot of the fog from earlier this morning totally lift. Now, because the ground is so saturated, it will be a little bit of a muggy day as a lot of that rain is going to be evaporating back out into the atmosphere. But it is cool. 64 degrees in New Braunfels, 62 in Yavali, 59 in Kerrville, 69 in Gonzales, 62 here in San Antonio, and 68 in Pleasanton. Uh, the weather pattern, it's dry right now, but there's where that low pressure system is up to our north. It meandered from our west for several days, and that's what brought us all of that rain. It is now to our east, and it's going to continue to move off to the east. We're going to be looking at a really beautiful day here with temperatures uh, on the warm side, though. It'll be in the upper 80s around San Antonio, but near 100 degrees out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, and Laredo. So today's weather, here's how it shapes up. Uh, around 10 will be at 73, 78 at noon, 87 and warm in the afternoon. Breezy too with south southwest winds at 10 to 20. And then looking at the rest of the week today, uh, this week rather, it's going to be beautiful. Lots of sunshine. We do get a front on Tuesday morning that'll allow for cooler mornings on Wednesday and Thursday. No substantial chance for rain in the next seven days. So, you know, we're going to get a break from the rainfall. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah Spivey. 850, 64 degrees out. Well, scientists are developing new ways to spot illnesses early tomorrow on GMSA. How experts say your tears, yes, Whoa. it could save your life. Taking a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, three, zero, seven, fireball, zero. Daily four, eight, eight, seven, four, fireball, one. Cash five, eight, 22, 23, 24, 35. Texas lotto, four, six, 18, 29, 36, 49. And Powerball, 35, 36, 47, 61, 63, Powerball 3, Power Play 3. Union President Danny Diaz taking a cautious approach, waiting until almost 1130 to claim victory, even after it had become clear that the no's would take it. If the ballot measure had passed, officers would have been stripped of their ability to collective bargain, a scenario that Diaz said would have had devastating consequences for the department. My goal is to let the citizens see that we're getting back into the community. Uh, it's going to take some time. Fix SAPD, the grassroots reform group came oh so close, its members still in a celebratory mood despite trailing the entire night and eventually falling short. San Antonio is hungry for change. They have awoken. They see that accountability has been a barrier. They see that the union, the police union, has been the, the primary roadblock to fixing these, these disciplinary issues for decades now. Now, with the proposition taken down, Diaz says they'll return their focus to contract talks with the city negotiating team. We're not stepping away. Uh, we're, we're set the meeting date up. Uh, we'll make uh, all the arrangements that we need to, and we'll be there. And uh, we just ask that they come to work just like, like we are, ready to go. Current contract expires at the end of September and could extend an additional eight years as part of an evergreen clause. Reporting on the west side, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Another look at the pollen count before we go. Just a reminder, unfortunately, it's very high today. Mold is past 16,000 just because of all the rain we've seen. One of the few downsides to healthy rainfall, uh, but we are seeing the aquifer rise. We're going to be seeing drought conditions relieved and over the next seven days we get to enjoy some sun and no real chance for rain over the next seven days. Significant chance for rain. Thank you, Sarah. There's Bobby. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We threw a lot of election info. Check KSAT.com if you want the specifics. Have a good Sunday.